right, guys, it seems like the more bicycle locks I do, the more requests come rolling in from things you guys have found on Amazon, eBay, Banggood, and all, all those places. Uh, this is no exception. This is a made by a company uh, named Sunlight, and I can tell you there's nothing light about this thing. Uh, it's just, if weight were to be my sole impression of high security, this thing would be super security. It weighs six and a quarter pounds or 2.8 kilograms, so pretty massive. I don't think this is a, something you're going to be walking around with in your pocket or hung over your shoulders. It's, too, it's just too heavy. It's probably for a, to leave attached to the bike rack at the metro station or at your office or at school or whatever, and then uh, just leave it there overnight. Um, it's four feet long. These links measure 10 millimeter, which is about 3 eighths of an inch. Um, and then we have the lock. It's a standard U-lock. Um, the keys are right here. But before we take a look at that, how much does it cost, Bill? I got this off Amazon, $27.95. So kind of balance this price with what it is that you're seeing. We have a massive chain. If it turns out to be hardened, that alone is worth $27.95. But... Let's take a look at the lock. This is, after all, a lock picking channel, right? All right, we get three keys, and these are steel cable. I can't really reach them around there, but I'm going to take their take them at their word. This thing works. When you take a look at the key, though, I think you can see why they're able to sell this. They got to cut a corner to meet that price point. I think this is that corner. It's a five pin dimple lock. Um, Dimple locks are not so common in the continental United States, so maybe security through obscurity, because lock pickers generally carry a rake and a tensioner. So if that's all they have, they're probably not going to get into this. But if they are a dimple picker, like I happen to be, maybe they can get into it. Let's just see how secure it is before we start breaking everything. All right, I'm going to try to pick it. Let's say I've come found this around a bicycle that I just have to own. See if I can tension it. That's probably too big. Try the medium one. All right, this cover doesn't fit real tightly, so I gotta kind of give myself enough standoff so it doesn't drag on there. And then, let me zoom in, I'll show you what I'm doing here. On dimple picks, you can see the dimple, let's look right there. What I want is a pick that I can put into this corner and he, he lines up perfectly with the center of the pin. And this is a standard flag and that's about as perfect as it's going to get. All right, so moderate tension. We're going to find a speed bump. Just work him in. I didn't find a speed bump. All right, let's recock him. Maybe something's going wrong here. Or maybe I'm not lined up with the pin. Bill. All right, now let's try that again. Let's try heavy tension. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. All right, on pin three. Lighten up on my tension. I can't get under him. Okay, that was pin three. Got a little click. A little turn of the core. Pin one. Got a little click. Trying to find another bind. There he is, pin three again, and there we go. All right, so I don't know how long that took, but probably less than a couple of minutes. Let me zoom out. All right, let's take a look at the lock. It, it looks to be a steel tube, and I'll cut this off in a minute. We'll take a look at it a little closer. Um, we need that key. Let me see what kind of locking mechanism we have. I don't know if it's a ball bearing at this point. I'm going to lock it back. There we go. All right, it's just a piece of thin, it's not even a ball bearing, it's a piece of thin steel, and it's just hooked directly to the actuator. Pretty cool. So you're not going to be shimming your way past that. Um, yeah, definitely not a ball bearing. So we're good. Let me go ahead, off camera, let me go ahead and cut this off, and let's see if we can't find some way to exploit this thing. All right, this looks like it might be too easy. It looks like there's a hole here and there's a drift pin that holds the lock in. 
So I could, if I knew that was there, I could just cut the cover away and then hopefully just drift that out of there. Let me go and clamp this up in a vise. And, well, no, I'm not. Let's just do it as if we're still in the field. Uh, that was not so impressive. Uh, even if this were in the lock position as you just saw, you can knock that pin out, that drift pin. I probably used a slightly oversized uh, punch to go through there. So I think on the outside it was the right side, but when we got to the inside it was just a little tight to go through that center shaft. But you see it did work quite well. Probably not the ideal lock. All right, let's take a look at the chain. So the lock, I would say, is probably not a lock you want to be using. It's vulnerable for pretty easy picking. And also, if someone's got a punch, they can pretty well get through that. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to put this in a vise. And let's go ahead and hit it with a uh, hacksaw. Just a just pretty common tool, easy to conceal. Let's, let's just uh, take a couple licks and see what it does. All right, guys, that is not a hardened steel uh, link, I gotta say. All right, guys, I think this is another case of one of those head fakes designed for people that don't really know anything about security. Uh, what we had was pretty low quality lock that was held in place with a tiny little pin. Where do you go? Here it is. One tiny little pin that it could be drifted out, and in which case all the guts puked out and the lock came apart. If the guy didn't have a punch, but he had a hacksaw, and I don't know why this was, because when I cut this, it, I think it actually, if I look back at the clock it actually took less time with the hacksaw than it did with the uh, with a die grinder maybe because I used the die grinder right there on the seam where they welded it so maybe right there there was some actual hardening that took place when they welded that seam but everywhere else on this lock this gold finish is a disguise to make it look like it's a hardened link but of course it is not at this price point, I really didn't think it would be. Anyway, guys, um, don't waste your $27.95. I know nobody's want, gonna want this because I pretty much tore it apart. If you're gonna do your own forensic analysis, go to the web homepage, uh, go to the big purple button, click it, register to win. I will give you all of this for your own forensic test and just to make sure I get a few people to register, I will give you a real Vero high security chain lock, a shutter lock. Anyway, guys, there you go. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.